water again. Guys, today is the day that we no longer have these traumatic running out of water, can't sleep at night because we're not sure how much water's in the cisterns events. If you haven't already seen the video, we did an unboxing with these five tank cistern monitors. We compared the features and the displays and kind of how they work and their cost differences and such. If you haven't seen it, give that a watch. It'll kind of make this whole video make more sense. We knew we couldn't cram this into a single video, so we're gonna today attempt to install and test each one of these on our cisterns and see if they actually work. Alyssa and I have been sitting here scratching our heads trying to figure out how the heck to even mount these things. And it's a little more complicated because we're trying to test multiple sensors all at the same time. But at the same time, I think mounting is something you have to think about. And part of it is because of how the sensors work. We mentioned that in the previous video. There are certain tank shapes that are not compatible with all sensors. But also, if you already have uh, liquid, like say water or fuel or whatever in your tank, you don't wanna go drilling a hole in your tank because you're gonna get junk in your tank. So we found a better way to kind of make all that work. So we talked to our local tank supplier and ask them if they had any extra lids. It turns out that the lids that come on a lot of these tanks are just kind of flimsy. So they actually just take them off immediately and they just give them away or I don't know what they do with them, kind of throw them to the side. But so they said we could have one of these. The only problem is we're pretty sure we can't get these sensors mounted into these lids because of the webbing that they use to strengthen them. So they have the big expensive lid. I think we paid $120. Another benefit to it, not only is it insanely strong, it's fiberglass, but it's got a flat mounting surface. And so this would actually work very well for several of the sensors that need a flat surface to mount on. The other benefit is you can drill this not on the tank, and that way you don't get any junk inside of your tank. We're joking in our intro. Okay, so that intro was a totally a joke, guys. But now maybe uh, like... Now I'm wondering if there's... Maybe we are low in water. Uh-oh. So know. we have not, according to my notes, we have not added water to the cisterns. Now Liz has taken a long shower every month. night. Maybe we're actually out of water. Maybe there's a reason we're doing this video today and we don't even know it. We'll, we'll know as soon as we go up and look at the cisterns, that's for sure. Oh yeah. You guys guess Bugaboo's favorite season? It's springtime. the word guys we're actually out of water <laughs> it was a joke at first like we totally yeah. were joking until I turned the faucet on earlier to get some water to wipe the lid and I'm like yeah it's really low which actually that could work good because this is the low point in the right. tank so we can actually measure I was like we're not gonna be able to measure the low point in the tank but we can actually measure it today so that lid looks way too small ah. doesn't it oh man nope, I think she doesn't fit doesn't fit I guess that makes me feel better about modifying the lid. Right. So, turns out this lid is for testing purposes only. Right, so that's so this freedom to screw up. doesn't fit, and you're not gonna modify this lid. Nope. Nor the flange. I guess when we're all done, we'll modify our lid for the actual sensor that we yep. decide to use, and I guess we're not in a hurry to do that. This is about trying to figure out which one we even wanna keep. So we're gonna start with the cheapest Amazon tank monitor. <laughs> As we mentioned in the previous video, budgeting cuts did not allow for marketing, so we have branded this ourselves <laughs> as monitors for less. We're gonna try to test the monitors up here that we can because most of them have a battery-powered display, and so we don't need 
grid power. If they work, I'll do the walk of shame down the hill and then we'll test the, uh, the display down there to see if it updates and stuff. So this one, we actually have to measure the water depth. We're telling it two measurements. That's the, how far away is the lowest point you will measure. Uh -huh. How far away in inches, so it knows what empty is. Mm -hmm. And then we'll have to tell it how what far full is. full is. And then it'll know how close and far uh, full and empty is. So the answer is 88 inches is the low water mark from here. All right, so 7.33 is our tank depth and the air gap we figured out is 40 inches. Looks like it's got a reading and it's saying the tank is full. I can't remember how often this actually updates. It might be, I think it updates. 30 seconds? 30 every minutes? 30 seconds if the fluid level changes or every three minutes if it hasn't changed and it does that to conserve power. So we might have to wait about three minutes for it to update. There we go, so we got an update. We're empty. Nice. <laughs> I would agree with that. So the unfortunate thing is we would need to add water to know whether this is correct or not. So since the water level changed, it should it should send a new signal in 30 seconds, you would think. So let's just check. I'm just going to hold it right here. So it did update and it's measuring the distance from the sensor to the lid and it's reading full because it's less than 40 inches, which is what we want. So I think what we should do is I should run to the bottom of the hill really fast and see if it updates to empty. Ready? Go. Check, check. I can hear you. Okay. <laughs> Let's see, I think our house is about, oh, 250 feet. And they say line of sight. All right, I'm clear down at the house. And now we wait. Let's set it up here. All right, it's been about three minutes or so, and I saw a little symbol on this thing that said, it looked like a, kind of like a reading symbol, but it hasn't changed the water level yet. Now we're over three minutes, so let's give it maybe one more minute, and if it doesn't update, I'm gonna say it's not gonna read. Let me know if you want me to hold it higher above the lid like we were doing last time to get it to change. I was thinking that if it gave me an empty signal, I might have you do that because I don't know if I trust the empty, you know, like maybe it lost connection. And I'm thinking that- No, if, if it doesn't do that, you know, we can try, yeah, just holding the sensor, but I think we kind of have our answer already. We're up at four minutes now. I, when I was walking down here, I saw a little symbol right here between what looks to be like that little sensor and the full. Uh, I was thinking that meant it was taking a reading and I haven't seen that symbol since. This is changing, which is the temperature. I'll see there, see the symbol? So it just took another reading, right? So you'd think it would update. But the question is, is that reading coming from the display? telling the sensor to take a reading or you know how's that happening i don't know so far we know the tanks are empty so this full reading is definitely false i think what i'll do is i'll walk up there maybe a little ways maybe halfway and see if i get a reading there and see if it'll actually update let's see let's go up to that big tree there we're about a third of the way maybe to the tanks i would say we're probably 150 feet it well, looks like it's not updating. So we're still not getting an update at 27, oh, 27 hours. All right, now I can see the sensor. I'm probably 75 feet away. So it supposedly took a reading. All right, I'm gonna say no. So nothing happened at the house. Nothing happened a third of the way up and nothing happened at the time, at uh, two thirds we, of the way up. We need to change our slogan. So now let's just kind of hang out with it here for a second, just see if it actually updates from three inches away. Uh, no. The answer is no. I didn't, I, did, I think we thought it wouldn't work. <laughs> Why would it? I mean, it's 62 bucks but, and there's like But every so once in a while you get the cheap product right. and it does work, right? So that's, that's why right. we are so passionate about these cheap versus expensive comparisons. You never know. I mean, that's, yeah, there's so many options in the market. We don't have all day to figure this out and uh, our time is more precious than anything. So On next. to the next cheapest. Next up is the tank alert from Tekelec. I think this one was $149. So this company provides this adapter for very common pre-threaded sizes in tanks. I think it's inch and a quarter, inch and a half, and two inch. Because we put the two inch bulkhead in there, we can just thread this adapter in and this little sensor will just sit right on the adapter. As far as water tightness goes, they include this neoprene seal 
So as long as the threads are sealed on your adapter and you, you know, maybe caulk this or use the neoprene seal or something, I think you'll probably get a, a pretty adequate water tightness there. This model does not have the gauge here at the tank. It's just a sensor and it transmits to this beautiful little device that for whatever reason, Alyssa and I both think looks like a baby monitor. Like a baby monitor. <laughs> um, it's very high tech. It has full, empty, and a little red light, which means get the conditioner out of your hair. <laughs> this one has this really complicated chart of switches that you have to turn on and off. And that's how you tell the receiver what the tank depth is. And then I think we go through a process of transmitting from the receiver to the sensor, which tells the sensor what to believe. So looking at this thing, our tank was 88 inches and we need to set one, three, four, and six to on. One. Like who comes up with that? Three engineers. <laughs> one, three, four, and six. That wasn't too bad. So this sensor has a watch battery installed in it and it's a sealed unit. There's no replacing the battery. They say it'll last about 10 years or something like that. Uh, the receiver is powered by grid power. So unfortunately, we're not going to be able to test this up here. We'll have to go down to the house. So I guess, I don't know. We'll just see what happens. So this sensor has kind of a pairing system where the sensor has to be paired to the receiver. We think we did that during the unboxing and it says it only has to be done once, but what if? So I'm actually gonna go down, plug this into grid power, make sure the receiver and transmitter are in fact paired, and then I'm gonna bring the, the transmitter back up, the sensor back up, and then we'll have to go back down and see if the, the receiver is getting the signal or not. You guys ready for all this stuff? <laughs> I was thinking that we should keep track of the number of times I go up and down the hill today. And tonight's dinner, that's how many pieces of pizza we get. Or bites of cheesecake. I can do cheesecake. I could, I could swap out pizza for one night. Because I'm pretty sure you could only eat two or three slices of pizza and you're already there. True, I'm at three pieces of pizza already. So from here on out, it's just how many cheesecake slices do I get? All right guys, the plan, instead of going all the way to the house, is to do all this stuff at the hot tub deck. If it won't work here, it's certainly not gonna work in the house. All right, it's getting readings, guys. I'm just moving the sensor up and down here. All right, I guess we'll leave that here. Go install this and see what happens. So I'll probably radio to you <laughs> and have you take it out and have you just move it. And the closer you get, it should read fuller. Okay. Right, all right. Well, at first it was showing three bars and now it's showing the disconnected symbol. So I think it's kind of decided that it's it's not getting a reading finally. So why don't you take the sensor out and just kind of maybe hold it closer to me, you know, over the tank lid and just move it up and down slowly. Hey, we got a reading. So it's showing full now, so go up higher. Yeah, that's working. So I've got a reading I'm showing about half. So maybe go ahead and stick it back in the tank and see what happens. Well, <laughs> so it had three bars and now it's showing the empty no signal alarm. You know what? I think it's showing empty. I was probably misinterpreting that as it's not getting a reading. And I think it actually is. I think it's just the the low level alarm is actually going off. Now I'm showing three bars, which is wrong, obviously. And it, it's kind of toggling between three bars and empty, which, I mean, that means it's getting a reading for sure. Well, I think we've proven that it definitely works and the sensor reads all the way down here. But I think the real question is, you know, do we really like the way this sensor gives us data or information? Obviously, we don't know if it reads full, but you taking the sensor out, it worked fine. So I think we've proven this one will read around 250 feet away. That much we do know. Next is another product from the same company, Tekelec. It's called the Eco Water Monitor. We really liked the information that this one gave us during the unboxing, so I'm kind of excited to try it, although my expectations aren't super high. And this one I think came in at around $175, about $25 more than its other brother. So the installation of this one is basically the same as the last one. There, there is one small difference. Even though the sensors look the same, this one actually has a sensor 
with a display. So if you wanted to come to the tanks, let's say you're using like rain barrels or something, and you wanted to vis visibly inspect them, you could do that. Obviously for us, unless we wanted to earn pizza or cheesecake, there's no incentive, but for other people that might be a good feature. So this basically fits in the same uh, fitting that came with the other monitor and uh, same thing, neoprene gasket. But the display unit is far more sophisticated on this guy. So we have tank type B. Our capacity is, I think we figured out it's, let's, let's say it's 2,000 gallons. The height of the tanks was 55 inches. The width is 62 inches. Uh, this display is unique in that it actually has a memory and over time it actually can tell you your consumption in gallons and it actually gives you a reading in gallons or liters, which very few of the monitors seem to actually do that conversion and you can kind of understand why. They're ultrasonic, so they don't really measure the liquid. They're just measuring height changes and, and you have to use math to figure out how that translates into gallons. So I think to say that we struggled a bunch to get this thing programmed is an understatement. We're confused because it wants to know the height and the width of your tank, which is wonderful. And it does know that your outlet's not on the bottom of the tank in most cases, so it gives you an opportunity to set that. But what we're not sure of is how to tell it that it's on a riser, like we're on this huge riser where there's obviously no water, or there shouldn't be any water. And there's settings in here that aren't in the manual. Uh, let's see, I think we have to pair this thing, so let's do that. Oh, so we're getting a blinking red light. Oh, so now we're getting a depth measurement. Okay, so now we're getting a reading. So it'll be interesting, about 26 inches, it starts going down. I don't know, let's stick it in the tank here. Put it on there and see what it says. So this is showing full and that's showing an error, which makes no sense. Oh, there we go. So it is pairing, I, I, I got excited. I thought it was a reading and it turns out it's pairing. This is so confusing guys. There's a couple of different sets of instructions and it's the same company and the sensors are all real similar so it's easy to kind of get confused about what's what. So it seems to have stopped. I don't know what it's doing now. <laughs> maybe we maybe we pause the camera for a second and figure this out off camera. Okay. All right, after lots and lots of confusion, we've determined that it's actually working. Um, we were just confused because it kept giving us this warning and the warning is actually that your tanks are empty, <laughs> which is correct. That's accurate. What is confusing is not updating the display. So we've, this thing is a very sophisticated display, I'll say that, like it can really be accurate or as accurate as you want. So we've set it so that at 38 inches, which is the height of the riser, it thinks that that's the top of the water, which is great. So now it knows that clear up here where I'm holding the sensor is actually starting to lose volume. We're down to 1800 gallons, 1630. And the closer I get to the tank, the more it's gonna show full. So that's perfect. So this thing is working just fine. Unfortunately, our tanks are just empty. The question is, does it work at the house? Instead of going all the way to the bottom of the hill, why don't I check it halfway down? And now I don't have to go all the way to the bottom, it's not gonna work. <laughs> yeah, so, no, there's no, it's still not working properly here, but go ahead and take the sensor out and just move it up and down, and you have to get pretty high before I see a change, and I'll let you know if I see a change. Um, it's pulling readings, but nothing's changing. You're gonna have to go higher than that, and you're over the tank lid, right? Yep. That's a change. So move it up a little bit. Nothing. Okay, I'm getting a reading now, so go ahead and move it up. Oh, yep, I got a reading now. So I'm only 75 feet away. So yeah, I mean, I'm not, it's not, it's, I'm not even 50, 60 feet now. Now I'm getting readings. So 50 feet maybe, right there, it's really good. If two intelligent people can't figure something out in an hour, it's not worth our time, right? Well, yeah, I mean, this is definitely not something you wanna rely on. I mean, yeah, what's really perplexing is that this thing still says full and it's mounted to the tank, and we know the tank's not full, yep. and this is showing empty. So like, I don't know why. On to the next one. It's not gonna work, guys. <laughs> On to the next one. Melissa, what was the number one rule for today? No dropping things in the tank. <laughs> number one rule. 
This is the Aquatel wireless fluid monitor. The cost on this one's $349, and if you watch the unboxing, you'll see that this is a more advanced system. The ones that we've been testing are just that. They just monitor a tank volume, the end. Not really much compatibility with other things like a pump switch or internet, uh, stuff like that. These guys, we're starting to get into a more complex component system. High alarm, yeah, it's good. Low alarm, it's good. Tank depth, tank depth, 88 inches. Top air gap, 38 inches. It's making cute little robot noises. Yeah, it is, a bonus, know. always a bonus. Zero percent. Nice. Correct answer. We have the first monitor, Where I think. Where were you the that, last hour? Right, we're, <laughs> all right, zero percent, you're correct. Here's the question. If we do this, does it update? Yes, it does. And let's put it back in here. And it should update to zero. Correct zero. answer. Okay, so now <laughs> zoom the test down the hill. Oh, getting excited. All right. Down the hill. Wait, how many cheesecake slices? Wait, hold on, back up. How many slices are in a cheesecake? Depends on how big the cheesecake is and who's cutting the cheesecake. <laughs> so I should have asked before I made all those marches up the hill who's cutting the cheesecake. Great. We all go to that one friend's house and they cut like inch slices and you're like, um, could I have done of them? Do you want a slice of cheesecake? And you're like, yeah, but where's the cheesecake Great. at? All right, bottom of the hill I go. All right, we're gonna do the same test, guys. We're gonna go about halfway down the hill, but this monitor is super genius. It's like a cell phone, it has bars. And we just lost the top bar and we're probably about halfway. Oh, we're down to two bars. Now we're about two thirds. Oh, we got a, we got a bar back. All right, so according to the monitor, I have three bars down here and I'm showing 0% water. So why don't you take the sensor out and hold it up and see if we get a uh, reading. All right, I've got a 92% reading and I think we're getting readings every eight seconds. So maybe just move it a little bit. Yep, that's about 100%. And now we got a reading of 91%, so I would say it's working great down here. And it shows between two and three bars out of four, which in theory means we could go even farther. This, I would say, is working really good, guys. And the thing is, we're running this off of batteries, but it actually has the ability to be run off batteries or off of a wall socket, which is good versatility. Obviously, if you ran it off rechargeables, that would work good too. It doesn't show you gallons, so this is not, it's not that technical. And I don't know that you really need to know that. I mean, sure, we'd love to have all those bells and whistles. But uh, as far as, you know, giving us tank readings, it's also giving us the tank temperature. And I have a hunch that if we took this in the house, we would still get a reading. <laughs> The good news is it's actually not that big of a deal anymore to run out of water. With the well on site, it took me about 15 minutes this morning to get the well primed, to get the water nice and clear. And then once we put water into the system, it's up and running. Um, it's not like we have to have our cisterns full or half full or anything to have water. So we can Alyssa, still brush our teeth. We got our morning coffee, started Alyssa a little didn't laundry. didn't have to go very long without brushing her teeth. So we wanted to test this last system setup. Uh, the problem, a couple things, it's a little bit different system. We'll kind of do that when we get up to the tanks and talk about why. Uh, but there's a big difference here and that is that the display or the receiver 
It runs off of grid power only, and it's a really unique display in that it's a wall mount. And so I mounted it just to this little um, single gang box, and that's kind of what it would look like mounted to your wall. So it has a very like finished look, which is very different than all the other uh, displays and, and, and monitors that we've looked at. So I kind of mounted this to a box, and then I, I put a, an extension cord end on it because I didn't really have a great way. It's designed to be wired right into like an, an adjoining outlet or something. So I like the look of this thing, um, but we had to do some stuff to get it to work. Otherwise, I think we've got plenty of water in the tanks now to actually test this sensor. This one, like the other one, has like a cell phone bar type yep, antenna. Yep, signal strength indicator. Yeah, and it's saying really strong, which means it must be getting a signal from the silly thing in the box. So, um, so we'll leave that down here and let's go put the sensor in the tank and we'll see what happens. So this guy is kind of the granddaddy of the monitors that we chose. There's so many out there, but this one, I think the price was around $550. And like the other one that we tested the last one, it's an expandable system. It can run multiple monitors uh, or tanks, and it also can control a pump. It can be hooked to the internet, lots of features. We chose kind of the bare bone system with just a receiver and a transmitter, but there's one huge difference between this one and everything else we've tested. This says that it's a wireless tank level system, and that is completely true between the display and the, uh, the transmitter. But the departure on this system from everything else we've done previously is that this is not an ultrasonic system. So everything else did not require any contact with the fluid in your tank. Of course, in our case, it's water. But this one has a sensor that actually needs to be lowered into the fluid. And it is set up for water. This is a very sensitive, I believe it's called a hydrometer or a hy hygrometer one of those two, and it actually measures the weight of the water, and it's set to the specific gravity of water. So this one is a stainless steel sensor that actually gets lowered into the bottom of the tank. There's a couple benefits. One, you don't really have to calibrate it because when the tank is empty, the sensor knows the tank is empty. Where everything else, you saw these elaborate calculations with the tank width and height and converting to gallons and, and all this stuff. And this one really requires no programming whatsoever. And it's smart enough to know that over time it can measure the highest level that's, that's observed in the tank and it sets that as the high level. You don't have to tell it. So just fill your tank all the way to the top to the overflow and there you go, it's set. And then run it empty, there, the low point is set. So there's some big differences here. So this one requires a little bit different mounting system. There's actually a rubber stopper or a bung that's required that actually loops around the sensor cable. And out of the box, this comes with a cable that I think is 13 feet long. So that's the deepest tank that you'll be able to measure with the sensor that's included. But they do have sensors that go substantially farther. The sensors we've been testing were limited so from anywhere like zero to about 19 feet or something, somewhere in there, give or take. So this one would require a longer cable if you had a deeper tank. But the same cable can serve a variety of tanks because all that matters is that the sensor is at the bottom. This uh, adapter plate or flange we actually purchased from the company where we bought the, the, the system but it's not included. There's a couple of different ways they recommend mounting this so we're just going to use this because we already drilled a hole in the lid but it's important that this sensor be able to pass through whatever um, you use to mount to the tank and then of course the stopper closes up the gap I would think a good generous bead of caulking or something like that could weather seal those. And then of course, that also means that you can remote mount the transmitter, giving you more options. It, with everything else, the sensor was with the, the, or the transmitter, where this, you could, if you had extra cable, you could mount it up high, say on a pole or something, and increase the range of the system. All right, let's lower this guy. And it needs to be very gentle. Apparently, it's a very sensitive instrument. So we don't want to just drop don't it in there. Don't swing it around. I think we're there. And then kind of 
plug that in there. So I know that when you plug this in, it actually turns the, the unit on. There's not really a power button or anything. So this has a battery sealed inside of it. And it, it is possible to run it off of shore power if you were, say, like in a really bad solar location or something. Um, but it does have a battery inside and it has a small solar panel on the top. So it should keep itself nice and charged. So that's it, that's, that's the setup. So this one again has an external antenna and it's quite a bit more pronounced than the uh, previous unit. So I guess that's everything. So um, what I'll probably have you do is just raise and lower this. Okay. And that'll give us the See same. If it changes. Yeah, so we needed water in the system to test this because it uses the specific gravity of the water, the weight of it, and with empty tanks, it wasn't gonna work very good. Check, check. Did I get cheesecake last night? You bet I did. All right, cool. So I have four out of five bars on this receiver, which is awesome. Actually, now it's five out of five, so that's the best so far. And I'm showing 25% on the reading, but that's because it doesn't know how deep the water can get, right? So it's not a an accurate uh, portrayal. So why don't you maybe pull that sensor up slowly and I'll tell you if I'm getting a change. Sounds like I caught a fish. Yep, we're getting reading changes so it's looking really good. Um, I think what we need to do is fill the tanks completely to really benefit from this system but it's definitely working um, and a good clear display and it looks like the, uh, the signal is really strong too. You know when I first was shopping for all this stuff, I was like really opposed to any kind of sensor that you had to put something in the tank. I thought, ah, contactless, that's all I want, ultrasonic, ultrasonic. And as soon as I saw this system and read the paperwork, I thought, you know, man, it's gonna be really hard it's to It's kind of like there's a reason the $500 systems are using- A contact sensor. Right. I was like, really? So the more expensive ones aren't ultrasonic? Like. How's that work? Yeah, it's almost too simple. You literally plug it in, plug the sensor in, plug the receiver in, they're already paired from the factory, fill your tank up, run your tank empty, done, and it works. And I don't know obviously why exactly, the antenna size or whatever, but that receiver down there has five full bars. And I think because of the length of this cable, you know, we could put something on the lid here and put this up higher, which would probably give us even better reception down at the house. Well, I know that we have about 10 minutes left on the softener. We're probably a little over half on our tanks now, full, and I think we probably better get down there so we can shut it off so we don't run too long. Yep, looks like we're just under 10 minutes to go. That was a lot more work than I expected, but I think we both knew that testing this, even this rudimentary test was gonna be a lot of work. We're glad we did this because I think we had a lot of preconceived notions and there were certainly things we wanted to happen with certain monitors that didn't. And So what's the, what's the conclusion that we came to? I think the monitors for less, man, I don't know, if you're on a budget, and you wanna play around with this, you kinda of wanna tinker with it and see if it'll work for you. I mean, try it. Just try to make sure you make your conclusion before the 30-day return policy's up. That's all. I think it's got a lot of great features and it can probably do a great job, but I think that the, the image on the box might be a little overstating the abilities of the monitors for less. So 62 bucks or so was the price on that guy. Next was a pretty big jump in price, $150. And this sensor really disappointed us pretty quickly. It seemed like the range wasn't that great, although it did get to the house, uh, but the setup was confusing and ultimately the display is super, super rudimentary. But again, if you're working on maybe rainwater harvesting or just kind of a, a fun hobby project, this might be a good fit for you. It has an internal battery. It, you know, it, it's, it gets the job done. It's a tank monitor. We would agree with that. This monitor is from the same company as the previous one, but it has a few extra bells and whistles. Okay, it has a lot more bells and whistles, but it was definitely more confusing to get set up. 
and the range was pretty disappointing. I think we really struggled to get the, the range that we even thought was possible and we're, we're certainly not asking more of this monitor than it stated it will do. I think if you wanted more information on your system like gallons and usage and days to empty, stuff like that, or even a way to monitor the liquid level at your tank, this one would be a pretty good fit. I think just don't expect it to go really far unless you have just pure line of sight. The cost on this guy is a little bit more. It's $175. Hold on, I gotta go check this thing. We don't wanna run out. Two minutes to go, two minutes to go. Right, here, here, we got here. two minutes. I think both of these units are much closer to what we were expecting. This cistern is a really important part of the operation of our household. The Aquatel unit was an ultrasonic unit and the range was good. The setup was fairly straightforward, pretty quick, pretty painless. And overall, I would say that if we want to stick with an ultrasonic unit, we're probably going to hang out with this guy. I think the price tag was around 350. It can ex extend its abilities, internet, powering pumps, etc. For the money, 350 bucks, I think this is a solid place to start if you're serious about monitoring a tank. And finally, the Big Daddy Smart Water. This was the contact meter where you actually have to lower the sensor into the tank. I think it's pretty obvious. The setup on this is absolutely brain dead simple. Drop the sensor in the tank, plug it in, turn it on, fill your tank, empty your tank, and you're good to go. It has some features we really like, like the surface or flush mount. Uh, receiver which is beautiful uh, fits well with a home so it's really something that's meant to be integrated into your life the sensor is super accurate it has a solar panel on the the unit which charges it so you don't have to worry about that and the range was definitely superior this is a starting unit you can extend it to multiple tanks but this guy will run you 550 bucks to get off the ground two gallons to go two gallons to go I gotta turn the wall off We made it. Yay. All done. So we decided since the well is primed, I actually added water to the brine tank earlier. We should be able to get the softener into a regen cycle immediately, a manual regen. And we're basically where we can just keep adding water to the cisterns. We thought, you know, it'd be nice to just fill the thing all the way to the top. I got the uh, monitor set up up here. Can you just tell me if there's any kind of a reading in the garage and what the the uh, symbol, like the um, the bars are on the, the receiver? 27%. Cool, so you're telling me this thing can actually get a reading in the garage? I'm really happy with that. Um, I think the, the instrument is inaccurate overall because we haven't filled the tanks up yet. And so it's measuring basically the entire length of the cable because it doesn't know. So we'll just uh, we'll just hook it all up and we'll fill the cisterns the rest of the way today and then I think it'll it'll know after that you know what the the high limit is so this is good. Mm -hmm. 